Have you always dreamed of hosting? Do you want to let out your inner Martha Stewart? Do you want to be surrounded by friends, family, food, and good vibes? Do you want to throw a dinner party? Then you've come to the right place. This is Parties and Pastries, Episode 1, How to Host a Dinner Party. Hey my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome to my kitchen here in Stockholm, Sweden. You might know me from my videos on baking and Swedish pastry and while we're still gonna talk about those things this year, we're also gonna talk about my other passion, hosting parties. This video will be the first in a series all about different parties and how to host them. And today's video is all about my personal favorite type of party, the dinner party. We will be covering planning, menus, vibe curation, basically the who, what, where, when, and why of it all. But before we get into the nitty gritty, who am I to tell you how to host a party? I was a professional baker and pastry chef for many years and I have worked in some of the world's very best restaurants. Besides that, I've been hosting parties, specifically dinner parties, since my early 20s. And in the last couple years, I've been sharing the party prep process over on TikTok, and people really seem to like it over there, so I thought I would start sharing over here on YouTube. But enough about me, let's get started. Step one is thinking about what and who. What is this dinner party for? Is it for a birthday, a holiday, some sort of celebration, or just because? What is the theme? Now there doesn't have to be a theme, but having one does help with menu planning and vibe curation. Who are you going to invite? Friends, family, single people, couples, every single person you've ever known or liked even a little bit, which is how I usually throw parties. Side note, when answering all these questions, also think about your environment. If you live in a studio walk-up apartment, maybe you only invite three or four people and you have a picnic on the floor. I know in my apartment, I can fit absolutely max 20 people for dinner, but then if I do that, I have to rearrange all of the furniture. After you've answered those questions, you can move on to when. When picking the date, don't just pick the date of the event itself, but think about how far away it is. Are your guests super planners and need to be sent invites two months ahead of time? Or are they more spontaneous and you can ask in the beginning of the week? Regardless, it's important to set an RSVP date so you have a deadline to plan around. So once you've figured out who you're inviting, when the party is going to be, what the theme is going to be, the next question, and I think the most important, is what are you gonna eat? When planning the menu, it's important to think about your culinary skill level. Like, do you even like to cook? (laughs) You can have a great dinner party and not cook very much. Like semi-homemade food is great. Prepared food is great. Takeaway is also great. Do whatever makes you happy, but make sure you have a lot of food. There is nothing worse than a party where everyone is hungry. For example, this past weekend, I had five friends over for Sunday dinner. We started really simply with some cheese and olives. I didn't want to fuss too much with an appetizer. I put most of my effort into dinner. We had roast chicken, orzo with pine nuts and basil, roasted broccoli and cauliflower, a cream gravy, a large green salad, and bread from my favorite local bakery. Once you have your menu, you can start my favorite part of the process, planning. Specifically, back timing how you're gonna get everything done. Back timing is a planning technique where you work from the last moment backwards in time. It helps you better see the order in which you need to do things. For every single dish, write out every single component and then every single step of the process. Next, write out everything not food-based that you need to do for the party. Cleaning, decorating, setting the table, lighting the candles, making a playlist, doing your makeup, doing your hair, getting dressed, all of it. Here's how I planned my to-do list for Sunday dinner. I wrote down the menu, the food to-do list, and my everything else to-do list. Since this was a simple dinner and we were only five, I only needed one day before the party to prep. What you wanna think about is this one hour before. What is absolutely essential to get done? I don't wanna cook too much in my party clothes, we gotta set the vibe, and then all of this should be done beforehand. I wanna put as much stuff on the day before as possible so that my day of is easier. Obviously, shower, hair, and makeup, I can't do too far in advance, so I'll put that in the afternoon, but making a playlist and changing out the candles, of course, can be done the day before, and that's our entire to-do list. Now, most importantly, 
food. Cheeses, olives, and crackers can't sit out for too long, so that's right before guests arrive. Because of my oven schedule, I will need to reheat the broccoli and cauliflower as opposed to roasting it off right before it's served. And we don't want mushy salad, so dressing the salad will also be done right before guests arrive. Now, what can we do the day before to make our day of as easy as possible? Defrost the chicken and the chicken stock. Anything defrosting should be done the night before. Bread, of course. And while a lot of these food things could be done the day before, they're not going to be any better for it, so we can just do them the day of. Salting and brining takes time, so we want to do that in the morning, but we'll roast the chicken in the afternoon. I also need to roast the broccoli and the cauliflower, but I'll roast them before I roast the chicken just because the broccoli and cauliflower reheats better. Everything for the salad can be chopped while the chicken is roasting, and of course we need to pull all that down so we can cut up the broccoli and cauliflower first. Onions and pine nuts for the orzo can be done in the morning as they sit just fine, but the orzo itself does not sit too well, so we'll do that in the afternoon. Gravy can reduce in the afternoon, but we need to deglaze the roasting pan first. Slicing the bread can be done in the morning, and temping the butter should also be done in the morning. Desserts, as per usual, can be made well ahead of time, so that's going to get done in the morning. And there you go. Now we know what we're going to do the day before, the morning of, the afternoon of, and one hour before. I personally do not like to do an hour by hour timeline simply because mistakes happen. Sometimes you work faster or slower than you think you're going to and you need to remain flexible. Editor Cecilia here. The main point that I'm trying to make is that you need to think about the end result first and then kind of decide every single step you need to do to get close to that. If you start by thinking that you have this whole big list to do and you just write it down and you start from the top and go down, you might get into a situation where all of a sudden it's four o'clock in the afternoon and you haven't made the moose. Well, the moose needs to chill for four or five hours. Why didn't you do it in the morning? That's what you need to be thinking about is how much time does everything take and how can I go from the end result that I want and plan backwards so everything kind of flows and trickles in time. I am so used to doing this. This is all I did in restaurants and now in my life with like making content and catering and all that stuff that I find it a little bit difficult to explain because to me, it's so obvious. So I'm so sorry. I hope that I got the point across. And maybe this sounds like just normal planning to you guys. But anyways, let's move on to the rest of the video. Now that our plan is made and we know what we need to do, let's talk about the vibe. The thing that makes or breaks a party is the vibe. Everything goes into it, the tangible and the intangible. Your three main vibe makers, besides food and drink, of course, are going to be music, decorations, and fun people. What's a party without music? Now you can get really into music curation and making playlists. I am not personally a very auditory person. I'm not really that big of a music nerd, unfortunately. So I just pick a Spotify playlist that I think is gonna fit the vibe and just put that on and that's that. Decorations can be as intense or as chill as you want them to be. Sometimes it's really fun to go like all out on a theme, but honestly, a clean home and a couple candles and you're good to go. If you are going to put out decorations, remember that they don't have to be expensive. Most of my plateware, candlesticks, glasses, all that stuff, I thrift all of that. And then all of my paper decorations and stuff, those come from the grocery store. But what is important is low lighting, no big lights here, cozy lighting only. Fun people are so important to a party. That feels a little bit silly to say because it seems so obvious, but just as a reminder, invite fun people. Invite people you like, people who are chatty, people who like to have fun, people who like to party, people that like to have a good time and that you have a good time with. The party setup can be super perfect, but if the people are not into it or they're rude, like it's just not gonna be a good time for anyone. A couple last pieces of advice. Invite people over early. Nothing is worse than sitting by yourself on the couch, everything is ready to go, and no one has arrived yet. That moment of waiting sucks. I combat this by asking my closest friend to come over 45 minutes to an hour before. She'll help me out with the last couple things, we'll have a drink, we'll relax. So by the time the party starts, the party has already started. Piece of advice number two, don't freak out. 
Like you probably will freak out because what is hosting without at least a little bit of stress and panic, but like it's a party. No one's life is on the line. We're here to have a good time. Third piece of advice is no problems, only solutions. For my dinner party, I had fully made a chocolate mousse. They were setting in the refrigerator and I thought for a little mid party prep snack, I would have some chocolate mousse. It was awful. Somehow I messed up the recipe. Don't know how I did that, but it was truly so bad. So I had to think, what do I have at home? How can I fix this? I had all the ingredients for a flourless chocolate cake, whip that together and all my guests love the cake. Nobody even knew that I messed up the mousse. All problems have solutions. You just gotta get creative and hustle. My last piece of advice is don't be afraid to use your community. Ask for help with the food, the decorating, the music. Ask someone to bring ice when they come to the party. People love to help, they want to help you. If you'd like more party inspo from somebody besides myself, here are my favorite party how-to content creators. First is Meredith Hayden from Wishbone Kitchen. She just started a YouTube channel where she talks all about how to throw different kinds of parties. Her videos are great and she is super fun on TikTok as well. Next up is Canadian content creator, Isabel Hikins. Her parties are always so cute. The decorating that she does, the food that she does, it's always just like so adorable, well thought out and put together. Of course, there's the iconic Alison Roman. Her party videos are some of my favorites because they're very food focused and everything always looks so delicious. And of course, we have the queen mother of entertaining, Martha Stewart. You can never go wrong with a piece of Martha advice or a recipe. I trust her with my whole being. And that's pretty much it, folks. Maybe this seems like a lot to think about, but like, it's a party. It's supposed to be fun. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be great. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments down below if you have any pressing hosting questions and I'll answer as best as I can. Have a great day and I'll see you around next time. Hey Dua.